Media Day. We're going to be having uh, Syracuse offensive coordinator Jason Beck momentarily. Also joining us will be interim defensive coordinator Nick Monroe, quarterback Garrett Schrader, and linebacker Marlo Wax. Um, from here, I'll pick it over to, uh, to Tyler. All right, welcome everybody. Thanks. Um, we will uh, call on people if you want to raise your hand for questions. Coach Beck is here to kick us off. If uh, Emily, you want to lead the way with questions, we'll uh, get started. Hi, Jason. First off, congratulations on, on the promotion. Just curious if you could share a little bit about what that conversation was like with Coach Babers, learning that you were getting the OC job and, and how you reacted. Um, so I landed, I was out recruiting. My plane landed and I had a bunch of texts and missed calls. Um, from Coach Babers. So I called them back and, you know, I was just waiting to exit the airplane and um, and that's when he, he let me know and um, feel, you know, prepared, ready, confident and excited. And so, yeah, great opportunity and, and excited to go forward. Now that you're fully in charge of this offense, I mean, where do you see this this program going in the next year under your guidance? You know, really, we just want to keep building on the things we're doing well on our the strength of our players and keep that uh, vision and direction going. I've been with Coach and I coaching for the last 10 years. And so um, it's been, a, you know, a lot of work together. So it's it won't be anything drastically different, um, but just more focusing on improving, getting better and, and helping to win games. Tommy? Hey, can you, oh, can you guys hear me? All right, awesome. Uh, Jason, I, I would say the a broader question would just be, how's your Syracuse experience been as a whole um, and, and just what it's been like being in the 315 and, and coaching here at Syracuse in your first year? It's been really great. My family and I have uh, loved it here. It's We're kind of hitting about full full circle. As it's coming up on almost a year ago. Um, so there's been some things lately that remind me of when I came out here to visit when the interest first came up. Um, and uh, no, we've, my family and I, we really enjoy it here. Um, really enjoy working with the players here and being a part of the program. So uh, everything's been great. Dan? Well, coach, Seeing that uh, you've been with Coach and I for such a long time and, and now having the opportunity to have the reins of an offense and get to call your shots the way that you want it to, just what that moment is like for you in your history as a coach and how you envision stepping forward leading an entire offense? Yeah, it's been something I've been prepared for and preparing for for a while. And always uh, at Virginia, I was always a thing with Coach Mendenhall where if anything happened, I knew I was in a position to to become the the coordinator. And, you know, the way we've operated and worked together, it's um, it's a change, but not a huge change. You know, I've been just really involved with game planning and organization and all those things. So it's just um, I'm I'm different. And so I'll do things a little differently. But uh but at the same time, uh, nothing, nothing too drastic. And then it really comes down to our staff. We have a great offensive staff, and each of those those coaches and everybody involved. Um, you know, it's a, definitely a team effort, and it's all of us working together um, to just keep getting better and giving our our guys the best chance they can to be successful. Do you look to bring in a quarterbacks coach with you having had that job or will just you will, will you assume that as coordinator to continue looking at the quarterbacks more specifically? Yeah, I'll stick with the quarterbacks and keep that going and then bring in um, to fill in the other spot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Christian. Hey, coach. Um, we saw uh, a lot of fans this year attribute a lot of the offensive success to Garrett Schrader's improvement. What have you seen coaching him this past year that has led to his drastic improvement over the year you've been at Syracuse? Um, you know, most importantly, Schrader is a confident, 
person, like he believes in him, him himself and his abilities. Um, he brings a great skill set. Um, and just trying to play to those strengths, the things that he does well, the things that he does best, and then organize the other people around him to, to utilize his strengths. Um, and so he's worked really hard every day. He shows up, he works hard. He's, uh, has a real natural leadership to him uh, that the guys rally around him and support him. And yeah, he deserves a lot of, uh, the credit just for his approach, his work ethic, everything he's done to have the success that he has this year. And with your increased role as offensive coordinator, along with still being a QB coach, how's that maybe going to affect or not affect at all your relationship with the guys in the QB room? Um, I don't think it will affect anything. You know, I, I can't foresee anything being different um, that way, but uh, you know, I'm excited to, to, just keep helping them improve as a player and, and take strides forward to, to play at a higher level. Definitely. Thanks coach. John. Hey coach, uh, you were coach and I's right-hand man for years. Now he's gone and it's your show, but what are some of the things that you've learned from him along the way that you're going to carry with you when you take over the OC job? You know, one of uh, coach and I's biggest strengths is organizing and building on what the QB does best and what the other guys do best. So he's not a, like, this is the system and you plug into the system and do what we've been doing for years. Um, man, we've had, you know, this is going back a ways, but we've had points where we had Taysom Hill as our quarterback. And when he went out, our backup was a true freshman pocket passer. I mean, they were just totally different guys. And uh, so that whole thing switched in that moment. And so it's not a system. It's, it's, he's very flexible and builds to people's strengths. And so taking that um, lesson from him, I, I feel that's one of the, the things he does most is he doesn't get stuck in his own way. He's always looking to innovate, create, and play the strengths of, of his players um, instead of his his system or, or what have you. Brent? Hey, Coach. Uh, good to see you, and uh, thanks for doing this. I, I was curious, just what what's kind of your spin on the offense? What are some of the things that you want to implement in, on top of what you've done with Coach and I? You know, that's, uh, that's why I say it won't be – there won't be a big change or anything very different because um, it's been a situation where I've had a lot of input and have a lot of big imprint on what's going on. And so maybe in the course of, of a week of game plan, there may be something I've liked that he hasn't and or vice versa, you know, so it doesn't necessarily show up, but in terms of the overall structure design um, I've been so involved in it that, yeah, there's not like this whole other thing being held back, you know, in any ways that is going to now be unleashed. Um, if anything, it just come down to maybe a play or something that, you know, I'd prefer and maybe he did not and it wouldn't show up in the game plan that week. But um, but I would think from a fan's perspective or from an outside perspective, it'd be hard to notice anything. You know, Coach, so. in the short term, what's kind of the adjustment without Sean Tucker, without Matthew Bergeron, as you're a week away here from uh, the matchup with Minnesota? Yeah, exactly. You're kind of in that next man up mode, just like when we lost uh, Burrs during the year for a game. And uh, and other guys, you just have to, you know, it's the next man up. And now um, look how for what they bring to the table and how you can utilize that. Um, in connection with um, being sound in protection and, and the, with what the quarterback does. Take two more for Coach Beck so we can stay on uh, schedule here. We'll start with Mario and then finish with Connor. Hi, Coach Beck. Sorry if I missed the uh, beginning uh, press, press conference of it, but uh, how 
much in sync are are you offensively with with calling plays and stuff of the nature with Coach Babers? How much input does he have still um, over the offensive coordinator job with with you stepping into that role? And, and how do you work hand in hand with him now? Um, yeah, I mean, Coach Babers um, has a great background as an offensive play caller, um, as an offensive coordinator, and brings a lot of you know, great ideas and, and wisdom to the job. So um, I look forward to working with him and, and going forward and, and uh, yeah, he'll definitely have a, have input and an impact and help me as a coach. And, uh, and I can definitely say this past year, I'm a better coach because of working with him and just the way he, he thinks about things and, and exchange that information. It's improved me as a coach. Um, and now with this as a coordinator, it'll be uh, definitely more of that. I know it's been a whirlwind for you, obviously, but what's the, the biggest learning curve for you for making that jump from, from being that secondhand man to Robert and I to, to now being in charge of the offensive unit? Um, man, I, you know, I'd say overall pretty seamless transition, you know, um, can't really think of anything, um, off the top of my head. Um, but, uh, yeah, nothing really jumps out to me. And then last question for coach Beck, we'll go to Connor for one. Coach, what are you seeing from uh, Minnesota's defense on film and what areas do you think you can attack uh, next week when you see you guys on the field? Really, you know, they're a really good defense. Um, they're 4 two, five structure, um, really aggressive, really physical. Um, they have, yeah, really good players. So it's going to be a great matchup for us to be able to put our guys in success um, successful situations to be able to to move the ball and score points. Um, they've obviously limited opponents, you know, to pretty few amount of points. And part of that is their design on offense with with occupying time and possessions and shrinking the game. But a big part of that is how stout and solid their defense is and how good they are in coverage on the perimeter. So, um, yeah, it's just a matter of finding those matchups or those things that put our guys in success to be able to score points um, to give us the best chance to to win all right thanks coach Beck we'll uh, let him slide out of here and get coach Monroe in all right appreciate it guys All right, everybody, we've got uh, Coach Monroe in here. So if you want to raise those hands again, we'll uh, start coming around for questions. We'll start with Mario and then go to Dan. Coach, what's it like stepping into this D.C. role now uh, where, you know, it, it's kind of on your shoulders, uh, so to say? Hey, Mario, I, I'll say this. You know, it's it's all about the guys. It really is. It's all about the dudes that are out there on the grass. But, you know, it, it's not like it's a, it's a brand new thing for me at this point in time either because there's been many, many practices many times throughout our time together. Coach White said, hey, you got this period or you got this period, just, you know, helping groom me and getting me ready for this position to be in. So it's, it's really not as crazy as it might sound, but it's all about the guys on the grass, man. Those are the guys making plays. Those are the guys flying around. And kids are resilient, man. I mean – <laughs> when they're young, 
they're they're able to overcome a lot of different obstacles to help get them ready for life you know and and they and they've been they've been ridiculously awesome it's been a lot of fun how difficult has it been dealing with injuries opt-outs transfers uh, along the way as you get ready for this bowl game now less than you know a, a week away well i'd be lying if i said it wasn't a bit more of a challenge than it than it has been in the past i mean there is a lot of variables that go into today's game right now that that didn't exist even last year, you know, I mean, let's be honest, it's, it is what it is, but it's just like anything, right? There's, there's no such thing as a normal life. There's no such thing as a normal game plan. There's no such thing as a normal week. It just is what it is and you roll with it. So yeah, we've had a couple guys to opt out. Yeah. We've had a couple guys hit the portal, but you know, you, you, you keep recruiting and, and you keep developing the guys that you have right here. The guys, the nucleus is still here. So so they'll hold it together, and and we'll we'll get ready to go and line up and play in Yankee Stadium. Next, we'll go to Dan. But if you ever could do me a favor and just keep it to one question, I got a lot of hands raised. I want to make sure to get to as many people as possible. Dan, go ahead. Coach, uh, two part question. First, you, you've been one of the the coaches that has stayed with Dino from the beginning on that short list. Just why you've stayed with Dino at Syracuse, and then secondly, your thoughts about working under Rocky Long. Man, Dan, those are some good questions right there. Uh, well, first of all, I'll say this. This is my ninth season with Coach Babers, okay? I've been with him for two years at Bowling Green, entering seven here. Listen, at the end of the day, a man is a good man. He's got a heart and he's got a soul. And, and I'm, that's, 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 that's real. The guy actually, you know, he has his priorities right in life, faith, family, football. He allows me to be a father and a husband. That's important to me. You know, there's – the grass ain't always greener on the other side. So to, to, to summarize that, I, I believe in the man, I respect the man, and I love the man because, again, he allows me to be a father and a husband. And that's, that's very, very important to me. Um, and he does things the right way. I mean, listen, listen the guy has a, a phenomenal personality. It's contagious. His energy is contagious. And I would challenge a lot of other staffs across the country you know, I think our players have fun playing the game still that they love to play. It's not always like that everywhere you go. Sometimes it becomes too much of a business and therefore it's now becoming a job. And now, well, what are you playing for anymore? It's, you know, so I, I respect the heck out of the man with that. And, um, you know, obviously the second part of your question, coach long, he's the architect of this defense, right? Obviously I got to learn it through coach white, which was awesome. And, and Coach White and I have become very close friends over the last couple of years. But it, <laughs> I don't want to steal Coach Baber's like movie line, thunder deals or anything. But I know he said something the other day about how Coach Long's kind of like, I mean, I guess he would be like Obi-Wan, right? Like, like he's almost Yoda, if you will, I guess, in that <laughs> regard, right? So like it is very humbling and it's almost like this, uh, the way I approach it now is, hey, I'm just like a player again, and I'm going to relearn it as a player with zero thoughts pre-snap, with zero ego, with zero mindset as far as, oh, yeah, well, this is how we did it, or this is why we, nah, I'm just going to erase everything in that regard and relearn it as a player. That way, there's a lot of different nuances, and there's a lot of bit of offshoots off to it. So, uh, it honestly, it is very exciting to get a chance to be around somebody with that kind of knowledge. And it's, 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 it's been the innovator of this defense. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Emily. You've Nick, you've been in the, in the coaching game for a while now, like you mentioned, and specifically with Babers, I'm curious if you ever see yourself being a permanent DC somewhere, if that's something you have your hopes and dreams set on, or if you're kind of satisfied in the position you're, you're doing now with recruiting and, and defensive pass game coordinator, that type of stuff. That's a good question too. No, I think that at the end of the day, yes, I, I definitely would like to be a defensive coordinator full-time at that position. Um, you know, it's, it's always got to be about the right time. It's got to be about the right fit and it's got to be about, you know, what league are you in? What's your schedule like? What system do you really want to be married to? And what an opportunity for me to get to obviously, like I said, learn it through Coach White and now get a chance to be around Coach Long and really, really get this thing fine tuned so that now if that's something that you know presents itself here in the near future, well, then great. Then I'm even more ready and more capable 
to handle that at a full-time capacity. Tommy? Got me, Coach? Uh, yeah, we're good. Yes, sir. All right, man. Thanks for uh, making the time. What jumps out to you about this Minnesota team? What jumps out to you about the Gophers and, and your preparation for them? Well, number one, they're absolutely enormous across the board up front. You know, they're they're in a in a league where that is a traditional ground and pound, run your tails over, you know, rushing attack, and they do it really, really well. Their offensive line is is ridiculously large. They they move very well. And the thing that I don't know if I've ever seen is all five of them in this season have all big 10 accolades in some capacity. That's, that's pretty impressive for all five offensive linemen, especially in a league in the caliber of the big 10 to have those kind of accolades, the running backs, you know, an anomaly. I mean, he is, he is really, really good. He may be with no disrespect to anybody we've played this year. He may be the best one we've seen. You know, um, they have two quarterbacks. They got the veteran. They got the younger kid who's playing good football, too. But at the end of the day, I mean, Coach Fleck is a guy who has implemented his system. You know, they want to they want to go old school and, and pound you and, and take your will from you. Keep their defense off the field. Let the clock tick and, and really beat you up across the board. And, and like I said, try to take your will. I mean, they're a they're a throwback team now and they're good. I mean, they're. <laughs> They're very, very good, but it all starts with their offensive line, and then it and then it goes off to their 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 wonderful tail back there. We'll go to uh, Daniel House from Gopher Guru. Hey Nick, since you're from Minnesota, did you grow up watching the Gophers? That's a that's a great question. This is a this is a really cool deal. Um, believe it or not, my dad actually coached for Minnesota under Jim Wack. So I come from a, a lineage of, of coaches. Yeah. And my dad actually was under coach Jim Wacker for four years. So when I was in junior high, getting into high school, I used to hang out all, all the time around the Gibson Nagurski complex and whatnot and uh, watch practices, watch spring practices. It was a really cool deal for me as a young kid. So obviously, um, you know, this is a very cool deal. I still got a ton of family and a ton of friends back there. In fact, all my, all my people back in the Twin Cities are rocking Syracuse gear this week, and they've already been taking a lot of heat for it, which is, which is kind of cool, you know. So they're, they're, you know, we're on group chats and whatnot, and talk to them every day, and they're like, "All right, where are we going for the game? We gotta, we gotta go in there rocking orange and blue and just really stir the pot, you know." But it's, it is, it's a very, it's a very surreal feeling, like, oh wow, you know, it's get to play against your home state in a in a magnitude of a Yankee Stadium and a pinstripe bowl. It's a very cool deal. Take a couple more for Coach Monroe. We'll start with Brent. There we go. Hey, Coach. Uh, appreciate hey, you doing this. Up, Good to see you. Uh, Good to you. Curious what you're hearing on the recruiting front and how things are changing in terms of the questions you're getting from recruits with NIL and the portal and, and just how different the world is today in college football. Cool, man. Now that's a loaded question right there. <laughs> that, that is, you, you'll put me on the spot and I got to be careful how I say this. You know, <clears throat> a lot of times at the end of the year, you, you go back at, at how you recruited and, and how you put all the pieces together, right? And you're, you, you look at it from a business perspective, no different than a business at the year, end of the fiscal year would look at it and evaluate it, what they did good, what they did bad. It, it always used to be, well, you know, five years ago, we did this, or three years ago, we did this. You can't even say uh, a year ago, we did this, because again, the variables that have gone within this thing have changed dramatically, even in, in a six month span. Um, I, I don't know what the future holds in a landscape of college football here. But right now, I would go ahead and say this, that really the biggest difference between college football and pro football has become what? The fact that in college football, you're supposed to go to class, right? I mean, that's really kind of becoming the, the main steadfast difference right now. Where it's headed, Brent, I don't know. I, I really, I don't know. I don't know at some point they're going to put a cap on things as far as NIL goes. I don't know if they're going to say, hey, each team has this allotment. I, 
I really don't know. You know, th those are questions that are above my pay grade, you know, but I'll say this, you better have your head on straight. You better have a plan for the future and you better be able to multitask. You, you have to, otherwise you've got no chance to, to stay up in this thing because it's moving at all different angles at, at a rapid speed that, that I don't think anybody can predict. So, um, like I said, I think you got to be able to multitask. I think you got to be able to have a plan and, and have some foresight and see in the future and say, well, you know, the way this is headed, well, this is what's probably going to happen next. And you got to be able to have a plan for that. Otherwise, you're going to get passed right by. And that and that could affect that could affect your, you know, your future of your team because nowadays too, it's so heavily, you know, you got to be able to manage your roster right now. That might be the most important fact factor right now is being able to manage your roster because when the portal opens, I mean, all of a sudden you might lose three or four guys at one position. Well, now what, you know, and, and I think that's also going to play in. I don't know if I want to give this one away, Brent, but I'll say this being able to recruit multi-positional players might be something too, you know, in the future. So, okay, well, we had a, a ton of receivers left. Okay. Well, guess what? We got a couple DBs that can flip over or, Hey, we had a number of DBs leave. Well, you know what? We got a couple of tailbacks that play both. You know what I mean? So you can you can have some flexibility and some be able to maneuver and shake a little bit within your own roster. Last one for Coach Monroe. We'll go to Christian. Hey, Coach. Along the same lines, we see so many of the uh, recruits that come into Syracuse tag you on Twitter. What's it like to to get these recruits and go out on this recruiting class and maybe find some of those guys that maybe turn into Andre Sisco or Trill Williams or an extra hot Carter or Justin Barron. Yeah. I mean, you know, this, this thing in this profession is like this, right? There's, there's you got your seasons of life, right? You got, you know, summer, fall, winter, spring. It's similar to that in the college football game, right? you got your season. Well, and, and really, really recruiting spliced in the whole year, but then, you know, you go on the road and you have your winter season of recruiting and then you've got spring balls, spring recruiting, summertime for camps and, and, you know, obviously official visits now and getting your team ready for fall camp. I, I absolutely love being able to go out and meet new people and, and watch young men with these dreams, right? Because I mean, these are young men, they're 16, 17, 18 years old. And you see that, that glimmer in their eye, like, Oh, you know what? I can't wait to play college football. There's still that passion there. There's still that spark there. And the ability to go out and actually like witness that and see that firsthand. It, I mean, listen, I I'm, I'm dating myself. This is my 21st year of doing this, but being able to go out and recruit, I think that's one of the, the, it's, 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 a, it's a blast. The amount of people you get to meet and, and see the different walks of life and see different kids upbringings and their backgrounds. And, and then of course, you know, getting them here to Syracuse and watching them develop. I mean, listen, <laughs> we've been fortunate. We've hopefully after this season, you know, in the draft, we'll have our fourth DB go in the national football league in the last couple of years. That's, that's a really cool thing to see happen. We're going to obviously see some other positions get drafted this year and go to the NFL. You know, it's obviously not for everybody, but at the end of the day, when you actually go through the whole culmination and you see those families that you develop these relationships with, and then they, they have other opportunities as well, you know, can you get them here to Syracuse when they come here? And like, you know, somebody asked me earlier about Coach Babers and goes, Dan, I mean, watching that whole thing come to come to the head it's it's a really cool deal it really is because coach babers is phenomenal when he gets to visit with the families and the kids here on campus and, and quite honestly our players sell this place better than anybody we have a great locker room our locker room is phenomenal i mean the culture is good and when you got you bring these recruits in here to this culture in this locker room it's it's it kind of sells itself the hard work is over at that point in time you just got to get them up here and sometimes as we all know these winter months sometimes Times things happen, right? Flights get canceled and whatnot. And it gets a little bit tougher. So, but yeah, it's I, I absolutely love that aspect of this. I think it's a it's a, it's a hands on and it's a it's a really personable business where you get to go out and do those kind of things. All right, thanks, Coach Monroe. We're going to get uh, Garrett Schrader in here in a second. We'll let Coach Monroe uh, go on with his day. You don't think they want to talk to me anymore? 
morning. I just want to talk to G. All right, we'll let him go. All right, guys, <laughs> you guys have a good day. day. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Have a seat. <sighs> All right, same deal. We are joined by Garrett Schrader. If everyone wants to raise their hand, we'll start coming around again. We'll start with John. All right. Hey, Garrett. Um, so Jason Beck, now the new OC. I'm curious to know some of the things he did with you this year um, to show why he should be an offensive coordinator and some of the things he did to help you uh, make steps this year with your passing game and overall just as a quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm first of all, I'll say that we're really excited about having him as OC and him being named and uh, just because of the relationship for me personally that I have with him and being in the room with him every day. So um, that ability to be with a coordinator and so really allows me to really be an extension onto the field because we're seeing eye to eye and we're talking about these things, things we're seeing every single day and uh, making sure we're just on the same page. And uh, for the most part, we've been doing that, doing a pretty good job of that and um, continue to get better. But uh, I mean, now we're excited, you know, the offense, we haven't skipped, we haven't missed a beat and we are, you know, we're, we're creative and we're definitely going to be, we're excited to play. And we've had, it's been really, really fun uh, past couple of weeks practicing and getting ready for this bowl game. I'm ready to go out and do it on the field. Emily? How important do you think it is to keep the consistency of the same kind of offensive scheme that you guys spent this season learning and, and trying to master under Beck? Because it sounds like he's not going to really change a lot from what you guys were doing this year. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is the terminology. And uh, this is like that was my fourth. That was my third offense in three years or my fourth offense in four years um, this past year. Well, they were still in, but um, having a new coordinator, the offense will pretty much be the same in terms of terminology and mindset and philosophy because he does come from that same tree and um, has been working with Coach Nye for the past 10 years or so. So, uh, I mean, just that, that's a big part of it. But um, and we're excited for the new challenge, and I know he is too. And um, But it, it, it'll be it'll be fun and uh, we'll going to the bowl game. And a lot of new faces going to be showing up, guys. Or leave, a couple guys leaving. and um, I mean, but there's definitely a lot of buy-in. And uh, we, we, we are excited to go out there and play here next week. Dan? Dan, you're muted. Sorry about that. Can you hear me, Garrett? I got you now. So with knowing that Jason Beck not only is going to be the offensive coordinator, but remaining the quarterback's coach, just what that does for you, to keep that leadership and keep all the things that he's taught you and with him moving into that new role, staying quarterback coach. Uh, I mean, it's all, he, he addressed that as soon as he, he was named. And uh, I think ultimately it's best. And, you know, he doesn't just want to be a coordinator and go out and just tell everybody what to do. And, you know, he, he definitely loves coaching and you can see that every single day. So I think that was, it was important for him to still have uh, and teach the position and be in that room every day. And, um, so, I mean, that's that's exciting. And, you know, he's he's my favorite coordinator uh, and favorite quarterback coach I think I've had so far. So just being able to continue to build that relationship and just how much we, I've developed personally and our, our, this offense from last year, um, it's exciting to see because we're only going to get that much better going this year. So we're, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Thanks, Garrett. Tommy? Garrett, thanks for making the time uh, with Sean Tucker, Matthew Bergeron, uh, choosing to not play. What are your expectations for these guys? We'll be seeing a lot more of uh, in their places. Oh, I mean, I think that there's obviously there's pros and cons. The cons we're losing two of our best players on offense, uh, if not our two best um, interiorly. So, um, but on the reverse side of that, that means the ball should get distributed to a lot more people. So we'll have a lot more weapon, weapons, and you'll see a lot of different guys touching the ball and uh, kind of decentralizing and uh, flattening that structure, which is exciting. It's fun to see everybody get a lot more touches too. So there's not really as much of an emphasis on who gets the ball. I mean, obviously you have a Ronde, but um, besides him, I mean, there's there's been a lot more guys instead of Sean, you know, 
touching the ball. And with Quint's come along, you know, Dan Valore, I already mentioned those two names a while ago, um, are kind of the biggest two that are starting to jump out. But then there's there's a bunch of other guys that are going to be catching those balls too. So Next we'll go to uh, Connor. Garrett, what was that moment like when you heard Coach and I was leaving, Coach Beck was getting promoted? What was kind of your reaction at that time and, and how you were feeling about hearing all that news? Yeah, it was, it's actually a funny story because we were all hanging out over at our place. And uh, one of our, uh, David Sobs, one of our student interns, uh, was he called and told us, and we're like, that's not, we didn't believe it. You know, thought it was just, you know, a rumor or whatever. And then sure enough, 25 minutes later, all articles started coming out. So it was, um, it was overwhelming at first. It was especially because we lost Coach White earlier that day. But, um, I mean, as soon as we found out uh, Coach Bagger was going to be OC, you know, that was kind of put put to rest. And, you know, we were ready to get back to work. And because um, we knew we knew we were working with him, Coach, because Coach Beck has a, had a lot to do with the offense last year, or this past, throughout the whole course of the season. So uh, just knowing that and then all the other guys, all the other coaches, we got a phenomenal offensive uh, coaching staff. So all those guys, you know, everything – we're not really going to miss a beat and everything's pretty much been the same. It's been, it's probably been just as fluent, if not better, just because of the extended time and uh, not having to go to class, all that stuff, but it's been good. We're, we're excited. Christian. Hey Garrett. Uh I know it's only your second year here, but it's been a bit of, uh, it's been a bit of time since Syracuse has been to a bowl. What's it going to be like to lead the Orange in the Yankee Stadium and play a postseason bowl game? Uh, I mean, we're we're all excited, and uh, it started from the beginning. Just everybody that's all we ever talked about is get back to a bowl game, get back to a bowl game. And um, for this team this year, you know, we felt like we were talented enough to take things further than that. And, you know, we we definitely feel like we under, underachieved in terms of what we were capable of, but just due to the circumstances and guys getting hurt, it was. Tough schematic. They'd go out there and win football games there for a little bit, but um, we 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 definitely we we bent, but we didn't we didn't break, and um, it's exciting. So, but we we knew we made it to a game, but we did definitely didn't. We weren't just happy with that, and you know, part of us wished we could go somewhere a little bit warmer, but you know, we're used to the cold weather anyway. But it, it'll be exciting, and we know the biggest thing is as we have a couple of days off here, um, making sure that we come when we get there to the bowl site, we're ready to play. And know that we're and make sure we're in the mindset to go out and win a football game. Last two for Garrett. We'll go to uh, John and then Dan. Yep. Thanks, Tyler. Um, <clears throat> I know it's only been a short period of time, Garrett, that Jason, our coach Beck, has started calling the place since uh, Coach and I left. Have you noticed any intricate um, changes in the play calling in the scheme? I know it's kind of the same philosophy, but he's going to put his own little spin on it. Have you noticed anything with that spin? Yeah, I mean, it's been the same offense, but the calling style has definitely been a little bit different. And um, I'm not going to dive into that, but stay tuned on the what the 29th. You know, you'll be able to see. I mean, it's exciting though. I just it's it's really it's been it's been this most fun I think I've had in a long time playing football these past couple of weeks. And um, it's just it's, it's exciting to go out there every single day and be able to go play especially with the way we're doing things now. So, it, you know, love this. We could love Coach and I, but, you know, Coach Beck kind of just been extension and building that, uh, building off of what he what he left here. Last question for Garrett. We'll go to Dan. And, Garrett, for uh, the Minnesota defensive coordinator, he compared you to Ben Roethlisberger. Have you ever taken that comparison, and what are your thoughts on that? I, I don't think so. Um, there's actually a running joke when my, uh, maybe when I was, when I was hurt, when I was banged up, but we were, yeah, there was a running joke that, cause normally we go, you go watch guys you like to play. So, you know, I was what, like watch Brett Favre, Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers and guys like that. And I was like, well, when my foot got all banged up, I, um, I was, there was a running joke that I need to go watch Ben Roethlisberger highlights, you know, towards the back half of his career and work on the pump fakes and stuff. But. You know, I'm feeling way better. I'm I'm better now. So, you know, I don't know. I've never heard that before, though. It's interesting. It depends on what games you watch. Thanks, Karen.
All right, thanks everybody. We'll let Garrett go and we'll get Marlo in here in a second. Thanks guys. All right, everybody, we are joined by Marlo Wax, our last guest for this afternoon. Uh, same deal, raise your hand and we'll come around. Emily, you first. Hey, Marlo, just what was your reaction to the news that Coach White was leaving? And then what have been your early impressions of, of Rocky Long coming in? Uh, so really, yeah, Coach White, him leaving was definitely like a little hard, a little sad because he's been with me on my whole three years. We came in together. And he's really done a uh, he's done a really good here, but we all know it's going to be great things ahead of, ahead for him and ahead for us also. But with Rocky Long coming in right now, he's a great guy. I know he 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 taught, he coached Coach White for a moment, and he taught him a lot of things. So I just know Rocky Long is going to be another great guy with the with the defense. Dan. You're muted. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Marlo, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So, you know, with Coach uh, Babers saying with Rocky Long coming in, he said after he heard him speak and, and some of the guys that came to his office that he had said to you guys, hey, just hold on, just hold on, just just wait. You know, when uh, Tony White had moved forward, just just what you can say about your thoughts from Rocky's speech. And Dino said it made him want to go out there and play. So just what your takeaways were from that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Coach Baber was definitely like told told us, uh, like just be, just wait, be patient. We, me and him definitely had talks because when a coach like Coach White leaves, a lot of people like it's, it's it feels different. People get scared, like they don't know how next year's gonna look. But with Coach Long coming in and the speech he did give us, just it did make you want to go in the field the next day. Just really, he just it, he knows a lot. He's a one of the, he's a great defense of mine. He just we we know he's gonna have us prepared every come every Saturday. Thank you. Yeah. Next, we'll go to Randy Johnson. Hi, uh, Marlo. Um, what's your impressions of uh, the Gophers running back, Mohamed Ibrahim? What have you seen on uh, him on tape? Uh, he's really – I've been I played against him in high school because he's from Baltimore, so that's my guy. So I know what he's going to bring. He's he's tough. He's he's going to – his vision is top. Like, compared to other running backs in the nation, he has a different type of vision. He sees different holes, different cutbacks. So I know – Everybody's gonna have to get to the ball. All eleven had to get to the ball because we know he can he can break one any any time. But it's gonna be a great challenge. Connor and Marla, have you guys been adjusting without you know losing some guys into the portal, Jihad and and Deuce, and who have you seen step up the most in practice so far? Yeah, it really, is, it's really. It's really next man up. I probably y'all probably been hearing me say that all year because of a lot of injuries and stuff like that. But 
I, I, I trust everybody's side. I mean, I know the coaches are going to put those guys in great positions to make plays. Like people like Corn Peterson, he's in the corner room. He's been like making big strides this year. And just I know a lot of different people, like offensive side of the ball and defensive side of the ball. Like another like Caden Bailey, you're going to see him playing a lot come this bowl game. I'm just ready to see what those guys are going to bring. John? Hey, Marlo. So your defense uh, has been much improved over the three years that Coach White was here in the new system. Um, we spoke with Coach Monroe earlier, and he said Rocky Long coming in is going to give you an opportunity to tighten things up as the architect of this scheme. What are some things that you think this defense can tighten up and improve on with him coming in as the D.C.? Really just like Coach White did a lot of great things, but Coach Long is going to like with those great things on top of that, he's going to like, like Coach Monroe was saying, just fix those little like with those little small holes and things like, I don't know, like just the physicality or just like the different alignments we got to be in just to put us in great positions, just to, it's just, it's like, that's what, uh, that's what those guys upstairs is going to be doing. Cause they, they, the smart ones, they, the, they know it all. They, they built this defense. So I just, I can't wait to see how it's going to be. Christian. Marlo, how happy are you that you are still going to be sticking with the three-three-five defense for another season? Oh yeah, it's, I, I love the defense. Like I didn't, I didn't know anything about it coming out of high school, but now being in it, just knowing like the playmaking ability you can have, just the just it's just fun and just really just being able to fly around. I'm, it's, it's definitely I'm, I'm big on that. Dan. Marlo, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Just uh, looking at 2023, I know you got a bowl game coming up, but but knowing what Rocky Long brings to the table and all the positives you've already said about him, just what the future of this defense looks like and your excitement for 2023 at Syracuse. Just the, the more experience we're going to have, like injuries are bad things, but a lot of people were forced to play. A lot of people were forced to have like a lot of snaps, and then this is going to help them in the future when – when they when they're going to be on the field, and also with the people that's coming back from injuries, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of competition in those rooms where people are just going to just keep getting better each and every day. Thanks. And then last question from Marlo. We'll go to John. All right. Uh, thank you, Tyler. So Marlo, uh, I've been following your story for about three years now. Um, you playing running back in high school. Coach Babers wanted you to play running back. You decided to play linebacker. You just said you didn't even know about the three three five really coming out of high school. So just kind of the background on that, um, them pitching to you playing linebacker in this system and allowing you to do that and be creative. Really, I would say they didn't, they didn't really pitch it because I would say a lot, everybody, all the coaches in the building, they wanted me to play running back. So I, I was telling them that running that linebacker was going to be the best thing for me. So just being thrown into it and they didn't know what I was going to bring. Like it was some film at high school, but they didn't really know what Marlo was going to bring to the table with linebacker. So it really was just trying to prove them that I can do it and that I was going to be a better linebacker than running back. And I'm, I feel like I made a, a better decision with it because we also got Tuck out of that class also. So just me and him just doing great things. But I'm I'm just happy. And I'm happy that it was the three three five defense. Just me, me being able, like I keep saying, just making plays and fly around like I can do. So, yeah. All right. That's it for Marlo. Watch him hop out of here. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. John, I'll turn it back over to you. Great. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Marlo, as well. Um, everyone, this wraps up the uh, Bad Boy Mowers uh, Media Day. Um, as a reminder, the game will kick off on Thursday, December 29th at Yankee Stadium at 2 p.m. Eastern. The game will be on ESPN on, and on ESPN Radio. Um, probably by end of day today, we're going to be sending out um, – our media information packet that contains a uh, schedule of events and other relevant media information when coming to the Bronx. Um, everyone have a great holiday weekend and we will be in touch soon.